Hello everyone and welcome to my latest video. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how I printed and painted this 3D model of Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. And here she is here. I mostly chose her because of the excellent sculpting of the face and there's some really incredible details that you can't quite see, but you'll see later in the video, uh, particularly in the texture on her outfit and just all over it really. Um, it's a really good sculpting job. Yeah, when I saw it, I just had to get it and print it and paint it. So when I was planning the model, I thought that I would try and do two new things that I haven't done before, which was paint the whole suit white. So, I mean, a, a suit comes in, I think black or white, which is, uh, I guess the snow suit, which I think there's a few scenes in the movie where whatever the way she's in the, in the snow. And, and to place her in that, in that snow scene, I, I thought that I'd bring in some snow effects, which I also haven't done before. So I just thought it'd be really good to try and to try out some new techniques. And just before we start, I do just want to say that I am trying to get better with each video. I feel like in this video, it's my best audio and my best commentary. So I'm, yeah, just trying to make sure that I get more, more comfortable in front of the camera. Having said that, I only put out a few videos a year because it is my hobby and not my full-time job. So if you could like and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. And even better would be if you leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you with any feedback, you know, any criticisms, that'd be great. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So this is the model that I found. It's from VX Labs. I'll put a link in the description below. It's off the website that I normally use, which is cgtrader.com. And yeah, you can see here, it's all split into different parts. Like, like a like normal with um, these sort of 3d prints uh, so I think it's about maybe roughly 20 centimeters no 27 centimeters tall something like that I think I printed mine at 90% of the recommended settings uh, this is just on the website here so this is what it looks like as you're printing off the printer but this is obviously a time lapse so it's a lot faster so here I've loaded the model in all of its separate pieces into uh, Chitu Box, which is the program used for slicing uh, the pieces for which then you can send to the 3D printer. And you can see here I've got the legs uh, just loaded and lo put in some supports. And right now I'm just hollowing out the inside just so you don't waste so much uh, resin and it makes the print go a little bit easier as in it's a bit easier on the, uh, the machine so there we are we'll hollow it out and the legs are ready for printing yeah here's just, just a look at the the 3d sculpting of the head they've done a really good job you can see all the detail in her face there and it looks it looks quite like her the model comes with two different versions of the head and in the end i printed both these different versions of the head but just opted to go for the one with the ponytail uh, the one with the long hair just sort of wasn't working for me so what I'm doing here is I've just found a picture of another model that someone else has painted and I'm just using an old trick that I used to use when I was when I used to do painting. So I'm just using the color dropper in Photoshop to select the basic colors of each of each sort of a like area on her face. So you've got her forehead and her cheek and her nose and her lips and then I'm just making a square of of solid color from that particular area. And then that way I can sort of mix the paints to sort of match each color area. And then what I would do is with this finished, I could then print it off on some photo paper and then I, then I can use it almost as a palette when I'm mixing my paints and match the colors quite easily that way. With all of that preliminary work done, now it's time for the actual printing process. So these are those legs that I had up earlier and I think these would have taken maybe probably at least 10 hours to print and they've turned out really well. So the next step is to wash any excess uncured resin off the print and then give each piece a final cure in my homemade uh, curing machine here. Then it's time to remove all the supports. And if you look closely, you can see there's a lot of detail in the texture of the uh, suit pants. So the 3D printer has done a really good job of capturing all the details. All right, so here's all the pieces 
that have been printed for Black Widow. Um, and the top row here is all um, parts that have failed or um, yeah, otherwise just aren't up to standard. It's not a big deal. So yeah, I had to reprint the base in two separate parts. And yeah, they're now, now glued together and all sanded down and ready for an undercoat. So here's a dry run. If you go, see I've sanded everything down and everything fits together really, really well. Oops, wrong way. That one. And that one. And the legs. So you've got a really good fit here between the, uh, the shin and the knee there. The seam is barely visible in there. The fit of the, the neck is fantastic. You can just, this is barely any seam along there, which is really nice. There's a shirt, a little necklace on, which uh, hides the, um, the join. And here she is here, all dry fitted together. And I think I forgot to record the undercoating. So I've just spray painted her in black as an undercoat and then a top down spray with white. And when I was looking at the reference photos, I kind of noticed there was a couple of parts sort of maybe missing from the digital sculpt, but I still wanted to include them. So if you just look on the photo there on the left, you can see she's wearing a collar and also she's got the batons. So I've used some of this green stuff putty, which is a two part epoxy putty. And so it's really handy for making modifications just like this. And over time, as in over the course of a few hours, it becomes more and more sort of uh, like harder to work as in it becomes more and more stiff. And then that way you have a little bit more control over it. And I'm really happy with the result. It's turned out pretty good. So with all of that done, it's now onto some airbrushing, just putting down some foundation colors. So here I'm just blending in the undercoat with some gray. And this is the base that she stands on. And I'm just undercoating that with some solid silver. Also adding different colors into the white suit. So I mean, being a white suit, it'll never actually be fully white. So I'm just bringing in some very light blues and some very light yellows just to give it some different uh, like variations in the different parts of the suit. And then I used a black just to very slightly shade around each different piece of fabric because I wanted to have a bit of a differentiation between the different textures and different finishes of each part of the suit. So you can normally see on the reference picture there on the right hand side, there's a different colors in the whites and the different, there's different textures as well. So yeah, I brought in these different shades just to, just to bring in some like a, a variation in the suit, just so it's not all one color. And with all of the airbrushing done, it was time to block in each of the solid colors and get some more variation happening in the suit. So I was yeah, painting in these white stripes down the sides of her legs. And there's also some more of them in her, like, in her top half and painted in the black belts and the gun holsters, all the details around of her, her feet as well. And I'm just working off the reference picture uh, as a guide to, to where I'd actually be putting these um, different colors in. So I'm not gonna lie, this part was actually pretty scary. So this is actually oil paint, as in the oil paint that you paint on a, on a canvas and make an oil painting with. And so the idea here is just to do some shading. So here you can, you can see I'm putting on black around the edges and then a bit of gray towards the middle part. And then once it's all blended in and really scumbled in into the texture and the surface, I'll take a cloth and I'll rub it back. And just what that will do is leave some shading in between all the grooves and all the texture of the fabric. So after a fair bit of rubbing it back with the microfiber cloth, you can just, you can see the difference here between the shaded parts and the non-shaded parts. So when you rub it back with the, the cloth, the highlights still sort of remain and there's a good separation between the raised areas of the, of the clothing and contrast between the sort of the, the more hidden parts. 
And just to take a break from doing all the texturing on the clothing, I just thought that I would just get the base out of the way. It's not particularly the focus of the piece, so I put down a wash of, uh, I think, a mixture of Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel and just Null Oil over the, over the surface of the, the silvered base. Then just did a light dry brushing of just silver just to catch the edges. And now painting in almost scratches with silver highlights. And now I'm painting just some details in just to give it some like a variation. So I painted some copper piping in and copper, copper plates in. And then this is I think rust streaks from uh, I think AK Interactive, just to yeah, put some rust sort of effects down. And now I'm just doing some chipping, just to make the parts look more weathered, as if paint's been dry, the surface has been textured and knocked about. Then I decided to actually add some earth effects, so I put some leaves from my back garden that I'd put into a blender, and put those into the, the grooves, just with PVA and then set it aside to let it dry. This was the second accessory that I felt that she was missing, which is her batons, which were, they're just attached to her backpack. So they sort of do a crisscross thing as they are mounted into a backpack. I managed to find a free model of Thingiverse for Black Widow's bat batons. And then I've used the green stuff again here just to sculpt them onto a backpack as if to make them look like they've actually protruding out. I feel like they finished off the backpack quite well, whereas beforehand they were perhaps a little, maybe a little bit bland. There wasn't much going on there. And this way, there's just some cool handles sticking out of her back basically. And with the baton sculpted and attached and undercoated, it's now back to detailing. So the first thing was to do highlights and sort of weathering effects on all of the black belting that she's got all around of her body. So I was painting each part of the belting with just some gray highlights just to separate all the little grooves and edges just for some definition. Then on the metallic parts, I just painted some silver edge highlighting just to make them look weathered and worn and used. And it was a little bit hard to tell what the backpack was made from. So I went ahead and made it sort of look quite just a dark leather. So I've painted it with a brown wash and then built up a few different tones of brown through there. Now sort of moved on to chipping the armor. So the chipping's achieved with um, just running some silver along the edges of the lines and then doing dots of black or very dark gray along the edges to make it look as if uh, the paint has been chipped off. And with a few finishing touches, such as the red belt buckle, that is basically the body done. So now I'm just going to glue it together. Now with the torso glued to the legs, I'm starting to get pretty excited. So the base looks really good and all the weathering and textures and effects on the suit look really good. So I'm pretty happy with it. But when I positioned the model on top of the base, I noticed that the, obviously maybe the footwear was looking a little bit out of place compared to the dirtiness of the base, which had a lot of earth effects and weathering on it. So I decided to put some mud and grime on her boots as if she's been running around in this scene and also it really helped cover up this crack that I had from when I cracked it when I was drilling into it earlier on and now I've left the I don't know maybe the hardest part until last I guess which would be the skin and her face so yeah I definitely wanted to get a feel for the model first before I jumped into the face which is obviously the most defining characteristic of the whole model and it's where, the, where your eye will be naturally drawn to and the two colors that I've undercoated it uh, the face with was Kislev Flesh and the lower color being Katatan Flesh. And after those two colors are dried, I've painted in around the recesses some Seraphim Sepia around the edges of the face and the hair and the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And now I'm going back in and bringing back in very thinned out, watered down Kislev Flesh just to bring some of that mid-tone back in. 
And I've just used the airbrush here just to bring in some uh, red into her cheeks and into her lips. But I think the camera wanted to focus on the eye of the picture in the background. So with the airbrush softening out some of the details here, um, it's time just to go back and back and forth basically with the brush just to sort of tease out these details. So I'm just sort of trying to use the the color palette in the background to get a rough idea of what, what colors I'm going to go for. And now I'm just bringing in some of the whites into the eyes just with the watered down white in preparation for painting the pupils. And I had this idea from when I was doing the texturing on her, on the muddy boots she's wearing, of like, using speckling, as in getting watered down paint and flicking on just the tiniest little dots of texture. So, yeah, if you look at skin up close, like it's just so many different variations of browns and pinks and purples and blues and, also, and even greens in there. So I thought they had the idea of just really slowly building up texture into the skin and so you almost get these like little freckles and different imperfections uh, of yeah reds and i think just flesh tones and the effect turned out pretty good it's it, it, the skin's definitely more textured and has a bit of variance to it and she looks more alive because of it and here i'm just knocking back a little bit of the texture there might have been a little bit too much perhaps on the cheeks and the top of her nose so I'm just airbrushing back on a little bit of the kids left flesh just to tone the, the speckling down a tiny bit. And by this stage, the, the foundation was basically done. So now I was just kind of bouncing back and forth in between the different sort of parts and refining different areas. So here I'm just adding a little bit of highlights onto her lips as if they're glossy and then adding a little bit of dark wash just into the crevice of her, her lips there and up underneath the nose just to darken that again and yeah just going back and forth uh, just refining the edges bringing out the details giving her a little bit of an eye line just to suggest her, uh, her, her lower eyelashes and most of this is done with watered down paint just to slowly sort of build up the the darkness without making it too overboard so yeah, this is just really thinned out Sort of dark brown mixed with a bit of black just really thin down with water just to yeah, just slowly so they build up the layers of, um, of basically like a like a glaze and now I've saved the best for last which is just bringing out the eyes and you can see even just with, with just a rough sketch of the eyes the pupils in there you can see how much life it gives the uh, how much life is brought into the face just with this sort of rough sort of sketch and so in the reference pictures her eyes are still a little bit green so I yeah, just started with the black just for the edges and then just uh, gonna bring in the green for the uh, the color part of the iris now with the iris painted in green it was time just to finish the eye with a pupil right in the middle and so here I've actually you, you can't just see it but I've got a like a magnifying glass just attached to one eye so I can't actually see how far away the paintbrush is from the model itself because it gives you monocular vision not binocular vision <laughs> so I'm having a little bit of difficulty just lining it up but I managed to nail it pretty well and now I'm just finishing off the eyebrows with with a very fine watered down brown and a super fine brush and then the hair was just really simply painted with some contrast paint. For this contrast paint, it's just a mix of yellow and Blood Angels Red. And it just turned out really, really well. The contrast paint just sits in all the crevices and grooves and then sort of tints the highlights, the highlighted areas. And when it dried, it dried really well. I went over some of the darker parts just a second time, just with the second coat. And with the head all finished and painted, I'm just attaching the head to the body. And there's probably just a tiny bit too much glue in there. so a little bit of squeeze out. And I was just worried that it might drop off, but it held on. And here I was just looking after it had glued together and everything. There's just a tiniest gap around the neck. And just in the join 
between the waist and the belt. So I knew that I just had to fill it in. Like it, it's pretty hard to see, but I just I couldn't help myself. I had to fill it in. So I've got out the Tamiya putty and uh, smudged it into the hole, into the gap, and then waited for it to dry and then repainted it. And just some finishing touches. And adding on the extra bits of hair. And this part worked really well because it just fits perfectly onto the groove of where I sculpted the collar on. So it just fits in that on top of the collar just perfectly. And it's coming together really nicely. And then when I was looking up tutorials on how to make snow, uh, as in put it on a base, I saw that uh, Citadel actually sell a snow effect paint. So yeah, I picked up some of that and this is, this is the first time I'm using it. It's always good to try new things. So I kind of didn't really know what I was doing too much. So I'm a little bit hesitant as to how to put it out and spread it around. But in the end, the effect turned out pretty good as you'll see in the final shots. And finally a quick dusting and then a spray with matte varnish just to seal the paint and protect it. If you've made it here to the end, that's it. We're all done. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like this has been my best video yet. So if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, just pop, pop them down in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. And just finally, this is my shelf where I display all my 3D prints. So you can see I've got a lot more to work on. Until then, keep on printing yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.